Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to be talking about how you can become a clinical psychologist in the UK. We're going to be talking about the difference between a clinical psychologist and a counsellor, what qualifications you need, whether you can apply as an international student, funding, the whole lot. So let's get into it. So there's a lot of overlap between a clinical psychologist and a counsellor, but the main difference is that clinical psychologists tend to work with more complex people. People dealing with more chronic conditions, people with a more complex background history, things like that. Clinical psychologists also do a lot of research, whereas counsellors do not. Clinical psychologists also now have moved into more leadership roles within services, and so you'll see a lot of clinical psychologists doing less of maybe the face-to-face -face therapeutic work and working more as service leads. And I think clinical psychologists can work in a wide variety of settings and can kind of move around more in comparison to a counsellor. You're going to need a BPS accredited undergraduate degree in psychology. If you don't have this, you can do a conversion course, which will allow you to convert any previous undergrad degree you have into an accredited BPS psychology course. So this conversion course is one year long and then it will turn, say for example, your law degree into a BPS accredited psychology degree because it gives you all of the prerequisites that are needed in order for you to be accredited by the BPS. Once you have your BPS accredited undergraduate degree in psychology, the next step would either be a master's qualification if your grades were lower than a 2-1 in your undergrad or you would go straight on to the DCLIN Sci as your next qualification. Now when I say DCLIN Sci I mean doctorate in clinical psychology. You don't need a master's in order to go from your undergrad to your doctorate. Many other PhD programs, doctorate programs they require you to do a master's, but not this clinical doctorate. Now, don't ask me why, but that is just how it is in the UK. So unless you have a lower grade in maybe your undergrad, then you don't need a master's. For your undergraduate degree, you need at least a 2-1 in order to get onto the doctorate. They don't really look at applications lower than that. It also might be harder for you to get psychology related graduate jobs with a 2-2. So that's when I would probably recommend for you to do a master's. A master's will then show them that you do have the academic potential to be on the doctorate, but also to work in psychology related careers after graduating. But also some doctorate courses actually look at specific modules during your undergrad. So this tends to be your statistics or your research module and they might say they want you to have a minimum of 65% in those modules but this isn't for all courses so just look out for that when you're reading the DCLIN Sci course description. Now you've heard me say DCLIN Sci many times in this video and yes it does mean doctorate in clinical psychology or doctorate of clinical psychology but what is it? What does it mean? How long is it? More information, please. I got you. In order to be a clinical psychologist in the UK, you need to complete a doctorate in clinical psychology. This is a three-year course that is made to give you the nine competencies that are required of a clinical psychologist. So not every uni will do this course. Now, all of these courses are listed on the Leeds Clearinghouse. This is kind of the website that lists all of the courses and this is the website that you apply through. So it's kind of like UCAS but for the doctorate in clinical psychology. Most of the places are funded by the NHS meaning that you actually get a salary while you're studying and you do not have to pay any fees for your study or you can self-fund. So this is where you complete, you pay for the course and you also fund yourself throughout your journey so you do not get a salary while on placement. During the DCLIN side you'll be working as a trainee clinical psychologist where you'll be completing placements in various services to give you the experience needed to qualify as a qualified clinical psychologist. You will also be studying alongside that, so you'll have a couple of teaching days a week and some study days where you'll be learning about different models, theories, conditions, the whole lot, and also having to complete a research project and potentially coursework and exams alongside that. So it is a very full-on course. All of the information about the DCLIN Sci can be found on the Leeds Clearinghouse website. 
This website has all of it. All of the courses are listed. All of their entry requirements are listed. All of the descriptions are listed over there. And they've also got an FAQ section and a section for important dates when applying to the doctorate. So definitely check out that website. It's essential. You're going to have to look at it one day. So if you're interested in clinical psychology, head there first. Another useful resource is the Alternative Handbook. This is a handbook filled with all of the course information but it also asks for feedback from current trainees so you can really get a feel for what each course is like and it's really helpful in looking at how old people are when they get on the course how much experience they may have had what experience so it has loads of additional information you can find this on the bps website if you just type in alternative handbook they have one for each year and it's a really useful resource especially when you're doing your applications so in order to get onto the Declan site, of course you need your undergraduate degree, but you also need experience. So most courses say one to two years of relevant experience. But I think the main thing here is to aim for quality over quantity. So it's way better to stay in one role and get a really good in-depth knowledge of that role rather than jumping around. Now in terms of the kind of jobs that you should be looking for, look at the person specification for a trainee clinical psychologist and look at the person spec points that maybe you're missing out on or maybe that you need to develop more and look for jobs that will give you that experience so these jobs tend to be assistant psychologist roles research assistant roles healthcare assistants maybe um, support workers mental health recovery workers anything that's kind of client facing where you really get that hands-on experience but they will also look for things like supervision or knowledge on how to use supervision efficiently. So think about jobs where you can get that experience. So most people see assistant psychologist roles as kind of the pinnacle of a psychology grad job because it highly replicates what you will be doing as a trainee, just on a lower level. You will also be working really closely with a clinical psychologist. Now, assistant psychologist roles are quite competitive and that's mainly down to the high volume of applicants and the low volume of jobs. So I just want to point out that you don't need an assistant psychologist job to get onto the doctorate. My supervisors had never worked as an assistant psychologist before getting onto the doctorate, so you are absolutely fine. Just look for jobs that are in the mental health or care sector because that will give you the relevant experience. I really recommend using the person specification to look at where your weak points are and then build upon that. But if you were interested in becoming an assistant psychologist and then going down that route, I have made loads of videos on my experience as an AP and loads of videos on how to apply, tips for interviews and all of that jazz. So I'll leave that linked over here. So there are two ways that the application slash interview stages are set out for the Declan Sci. The one scenario is that the courses that you apply for only do an application and an interview stage. If that's the case, then if they like your application, you'll go straight to an interview. The other scenario is that they have a selection test. So these selection tests can be made up of a stats test, a situational judgment test, um, and a writing test potentially. Now, not every course do a selection test. So you should pick courses that really play to your strengths if you know that you're not great at tests and obviously don't pick courses that have selection tests every selection test is kind of different so some courses like Salomon, Surrey and East London actually all join up so if you apply to all of those unis you only have to sit one test but other unis kind of do it as a standalone selection test for their own course so it really depends if you opt for courses with a selection test what will happen is they will look at your application and then see whether you're a good candidate you'll then be called for a selection test and then if you get high enough in that selection test they will then call you for an interview now this is what they say on paper will happen. I got a relatively good mark in my selection test but I did not get called to an interview so they do look at your application as well. So it's a combination of your application and your selection test that will get you to the interview stage. So once you get to an interview phase you will have an interview with a panel. That is bog standard for every single course. Now other courses may add in a group task or potentially a research proposal type thing where you have to discuss research but this will depend on each course. For international students who haven't completed a degree that was tested in English, then you'll have to show that your English language is at a good level where you can study at doctorate level. So you will have to complete an IELTS test. So say for example, you studied a psychology degree in a different country, but it was not tested in English, then you would need to take the IELTS. And this is basically to show that your English is at a good enough level for you to study a doctorate. In terms of funding, you can apply for the NHS funded 
positions however you need to make sure that your visa will allow you to do this and a student visa will not allow you to do this you need a visa that will allow you to have full working capabilities that's kind of the path you can go down if you want to have an nhs funded place now if you want to self-fund then self-fund some courses do have self-funded places where you will have to pay for everything in terms of your tuition and also you won't get a salary finally the bps will need to approve your course if you did it in different country to see if it is BPS accredited in that way to see if it covers all of the prerequisite topics that you would need to have in order to study at a doctoral level. If your course isn't approved by the BPS then you would have to do a conversion course so that is the one year course that you can do after any undergraduate level degree. Now if you want any more information about studying in the UK check out a website called Study UK they have way more information so please check out this website that will probably have more legitimate information than I do. So yeah I hope this video was was helpful for you i tried to make it as concise as possible because i know it can be very overwhelming please leave any questions down below and i will get back to you if you like this video please give it a like and subscribe for more content like this and until next time guys i will see you later bye